Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Today is a beginning of a new work week. And as such, we continue with day five of 40 things to give up for Lent and beyond. And today, at the beginning of the work week, we are talking about giving up retirement. You know, if you are here, if you are still breathing, God is not done with you yet. You are here for a reason. Your know, work is often viewed as a four-letter word. It is viewed as a bad thing. But when God created man, he created Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden, he put him in the Garden of Eden to work and to serve. It was work that gave him purpose. We read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. But what happened? When Adam and Eve fell into sin, there was a curse that was put over our work. Genesis 17, verse 19 talks about this curse. Here it says, To Adam God said, Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Work from that point forward would become associated with toil and sweat. But apart from the curse, work is a good thing because work gives us meaning and purpose. When it comes to work, I see four different types of work in this world. First of all, there is work that you detest. This is work that you will do anything to get out of. A second type of work is work that you tolerate. This is not work that you enjoy, but it's a big drain on you, but you do it anyways. Then there is work that you enjoy. This is work that you are happy to do, but at the end of the day, it, it drains you and it's you're tired and you're ready to go home. Then there is the work that you are passionate for. And this is the best type of work. This is the work that you live for. This is the work that doesn't drain you, but this is the work that fills you up. Now, the work that you do for a paycheck, will fall into one of these four categories. And some people are blessed to do work that they are passionate about and receive a paycheck for doing that. There's other people whose work, their career, um, they live for the weekends, basically. Well, I want you to separate here for a moment, though, the work that you do for a paycheck from the work that God calls us to. You know, there's the work of being a parent, there's the work of being a spouse, there's the work of being a leader in your church. There's the work of being a volunteer in your community. These are different vocations. And we don't always get a paycheck for this work, but this work is often the most fulfilling. You know, many people who lose their jobs or go into retirement, they fall into a depression. And I believe that much of that can be attributed to a loss of purpose. Remember, God created you to work and to serve. We're wired that way to work. When we lose that part of our life, there is something that is missing. So make sure to remember that your work is defined by more than just your career. Now, there are different seasons in life, and there are different callings for different times. You know, our work changes over time. And I had a mentor, uh, Pastor Barry Kolb, who once said, we don't really retire from our work, we just transition in our calling. Wherever you are in life, strive to find the work that you are passionate about. It may be coaching your daughter's basketball team. It may be mentoring incarcerated youth. It may be playing an instrument on your church's praise team. But here's the thing. Look for it. Find it. Seek it out. The benefit of this work is not always a paycheck, but in this work you will find fulfillment in living in line with God's purposes. Colossians 3 verses 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as a reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. The greatest work of all is the saving work of Jesus Christ. It certainly was not pleasant work that he endured by any stretch of the imagination. Yet the Bible says he did this agonizing work out of joy. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scoring its shame. The passion Jesus had for this most difficult work was for you. The joy that he had in doing this work was the vision that he had of spending eternity together with you forever. That made it all worth it. So when you find it difficult to work, think about Jesus Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
So how about you? What's God got you doing these days? It's time to go to work.